Hi. For today's data science talk, chalk talk, I want to talk about probability, and I want to talk about it in one of the oldest ways it's discussed as in theories of betting systems and gambling systems, which is actually not really a topic that I'm passionate about. I'm very passionate about probability, but I'm not really a big fan of gambling. But this is where probability was largely invented and initially researched. To move this topic forward, we're going to talk about a very specific game and betting system um, based on the Kelly betting criteria and a, a system that was uh, popularized and researched by Professor Thorpe in his famous books, Beat the Dealer, Beat the Market, and A Man for All Markets. So we're going to use a Thorpe style counting system to bet on a very simple card game. Now, I do feel a little guilty saying we have a betting system because I spend a lot of time as a mathematician explaining to people that betting systems that work are not possible for coin flipping or sampling with replacement systems. However, for cards or sampling without replacement, they are possible. Now let's define our terms. I'm going to use this sack of chips to simulate drawing cards so you don't need to see my poor card handling ability. Now this happens to be the queen of hearts. Now in sampling without replacement, we draw our next tile without putting this back in the sack. So for a single deck system, there's no way the next tile can again be the queen of hearts. Now for sampling with replacement, we draw a tile, and then when we draw again, this is the eight of spades, we replace it first, so in principle, the next draw could have been the ace of spades. It's just like with coin flips, just because the first flip was heads doesn't mean that that side is no longer available. The second flip could also be heads. So, the idea is, for sampling without replacement, or the theory of card draws, the information we have on the table informs us a lot about what remains in the deck. For instance, if we drew three cards and they're all red, then we know there are three more black cards in this deck than red cards. The excess here is a, minor, is a deficit here. That lets us productively bet on the following very simple game. We're just going to bet whether the next card drawn is red or black, and we'll uh, win or lose based on that. So much simpler than a game like blackjack, which is where counting systems were made most famous, but much makes much more obvious that it's the betting system that is doing all the work. Now, a correct Kelly betting system involves using or memorizing a card like this, where every row and column is how many red or black cards remain in the deck, and the numbers in the cells are what fraction or percentage of our stake to bet as our next thing. A betting system that is trading off ruin, which is losing all your money and making rapid profits, is always stated in terms of percent of stake to bet. If you have a lot of money, you can afford to bet a lot of money. If you have very little money, you can only bet very little money. However, you cannot take a card like this in the casino, and the game is not interesting enough to memorize such rules. So instead, we'll use a Thorpe-style count system. Now the count is actually very simple. Every time we see a black card, we'll add one, and every time we see a red card, we will subtract one. That gives us what the net imbalance in the bag is, which is what we'll do our bets. Our bets will be 5% of our stake in the direction of imbalance, something I'll make a little bit more precise as we start. If we think the bag is balanced, which we think it is at the beginning, we'll bet $1 on black. So let's go ahead and stake ourselves. Normally we would not be allowed to reach into the dealer's area, but I'm playing both the dealer and the player. So I'm staking myself with $100. Exchange that out for some lower denomination chips. And let's go. We are ready to start. The bag has been shuffled. And I'm going to, since I believe the bag is balanced, I'm going to bet $1 on black just to stay in the game. Now I draw out the first card. It happens to be black, so I happen to win. However, more importantly for our demonstration, we now believe there are more red cards in the sack because we see more black cards on the table. So we're going to bet on what's in the sack. We think there's an imbalance of one excess red card in the sack, so we'll bet 5% of our stake on the sack, which is approximately $5. Go ahead and do our draw. We happen to lose. So now we believe that there are two excess cards that are red in the sack, so the rule says we should bet about 10% of our stake. Our stake is no longer $100, so 10% is probably closer to $9, then 10, so I'm going to go ahead and bet $9 on red. And again, I'm betting against the color I see on the table, because that's the color remaining in the sack. I draw. Happened to be wrong again. 
So the rule says I should bet about 15% of my stake. I'm guessing that's probably now that my stake's greatly reduced around $11. Not bothering to do the math. Let's go ahead and take the bet. I happen to be right. So I get my bet back as winnings. Now you see, every time I win, my information is degraded a bit, the bag rebalances, and every time I lose, my information becomes a little less, a little more important. So I now have um, an imbalance of two, so I should bet about 10% of my winnings, which, um, I'm gonna cash that back for five, I would say is about four bucks, not quite five. So let's go ahead and bet four. And again, where do we bet it? We bet it on red, because we see excess black on the table, so we think there's excess red in the sack. Got to not accidentally forget to reverse that. Now we happen to be wrong, so we lose our bet. We now need to bet 15% of our stake on red. So that's probably, again, around $12 at this point, not 15. And we happen to be right. So we win. Now our information is degraded. We think that there's two excess red chips in the sack, so we should bet 10% of our stake. Our stake is now above $100, so we'll bet um, $11 instead of 10 on red. We're just doing approximations. We happen to be right. Now, again, our advantage is degraded. We now think there's only one excess red chip, so we should bet 5% of our stake. Our stake is now somewhat over $100, so we would bet one chip plus maybe a couple more, that being an approximation of 5% of our net worth. We um, are wrong, so we lose all that. Now. The rule says we should bet about 10% of our stake. Our stake has been damaged a little by that, so it's uh, about probably around 11 chips. And we happen to be right. Now again, our imbalance is down to one chip, so it should be about 5% of our stake. Our stake is substantially more than $100, so we'll say that's probably around $7. And we happen to be right. Now what we're doing is we're betting more when the game is more, balanced, more unbalanced in our favor, and we're betting less when the game is closer to fair. And that is how the system works. If the game were fair, we never could pull off something like that. And that coin flip games, we tend the fairness tends not to move around a lot during the game. Card games, it tends to rush up and down. Um, if there's more red chips in the bag, betting on red becomes more and more profitable. If it's balanced like this, um, we have no advantage. So we just bet one dollar on black to reestablish the difference in counts. However, we have, and again, it's definitely, you would never count your chips at the table, but we have our original um, stake back here, and we have this as our um, current winnings. And of course, we could have stopped when we were below or stopped when we were above, and you've only ever won if you stop when you're above. However, the, if we get towards the end of the deck where there's only one or two cards, we could have substantial imbalances, though probably the casino would reshuffle before then. But this is basically the betting system. It's, again, for a 52-card deck, betting red versus black. Our approximate strategy, which is not nearly as efficient as the Kelly strategy, is to bet 5% of our stake in the direction of imbalance for every unit of imbalance. So if we think there's two excess cards in one color, we would bet 10% of our thing. And again, we're betting on what's in the bag, not what's on the table. Those are complementary. We're using what's on the table to track it. Well, thank you very much uh, for your time. And that is the Kelly system in a Thorpe counting realization, and that is a betting system for cards.